Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first of hopefully many look back reviews on some of the amazing Transformers Revenge of the Fallen figures that were released over 10 years ago to this very day. With the 10 year anniversary of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen on the horizon, I thought it would be a great way to celebrate the movie turning 10 years by taking a look at probably one of the best Transformers toy lines of all time. Now in this episode, I will be starting off by taking a look at the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Supreme Class Devastator. I've chosen this figure merely for the fact that Devastator was in one of the best money shots from the Revenge of the Fallen movie and is one of the more memorable things to come out of the movie. Depending on the success of this video, I will be doing many more of these look back reviews, taking a look at some of the best Transformers lines, such as the Human Alliance line. Here I have Skids and Mudflap. Taking a look at some of the Voyager class figures. Here I have the title character, The Fallen, looking really awesome. So if you do like this video, please be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Considering that this figure is approximately 10 years old, I no longer have the packaging for it. It would be near enough impossible for me to preserve that box just due to the way it was packaged. But from memory, I recall that it was a square window shaped box, which had Devastator fully combined and showed off in the front window display. It also had a try me option where you could test out Devastator's electronic feature. Yes, this figure actually has electronic lights and sounds in it, which to Transformers nowadays is completely gone. Now, despite this figure being labeled as the Constructicon Devastator, unfortunately, each of Devastator's limbs main torso and head section are not actually transformable into their robot modes. I do know that we have a fantastic looking Studio Series Devastator on the horizon where it'll be a mixture of Deluxe, Voyager class and possibly Leader class depending on the configuration that they go for the torso and head section. And I do know that they have three modes, the robot mode, the vehicle mode and the constructor con mode. However, for this figure, Hasbro opted just to do the vehicle mode and limb mode configurations as we did get individual Voyager class and Deluxe figures in the main line which were unfortunately unable to combine. Starting off with details, as you can see, this Devastator has got a fantastic head sculpt, this section here, and these pieces really do look magnificent. Now on the original release, which is what I got, it was just a standard grey plastic. My dad is actually a custom genius, so he managed to apply the more movie accurate red paint applications on it, making it look a lot more screen accurate and a lot more eye pleasing. As you can see, we do have the translucent green eyes. These are obviously to accommodate the LED feature, and you've also got some nice neon green paint applications in the top of the head section. Turning down to the torso section of Devastator as you can see this too has been detailed fairly nicely I do wish it was a little bit more complicated in design like we saw in the movie however obviously you can see the treads of I believe it was Scavenger situated there so that looks cool and we've got the shoulder pad as well which are also part of Scavenger They've got some nice detail in them as well, however unpainted, we've got loads of different pistons there and some mechanical detailing, quite odd colour choices really. And then turning it around to the back, we've got some vehicle mode kibble on the shoulders and then here at the top of Mixmaster, we've got the entirety of the cab section as well. Turning him around again, as you can see, he's still got more of that kind of vehicle mode kibble hanging out, but he doesn't look too bad and actually looks pretty decent in hand. Taking a look at the arms, as you can see, there's some nice detailing on them, however the majority of this figure is more sculpted in plastic and colored plastic as opposed to pen applications. There's really not much here. I do actually prefer this hand to this one. I like how these shovel pieces separate to become the claws of Devastator and really quite convincingly as well. And they've got some articulation so you can maneuver them in a variety of different ways also. And then moving down to this one, as you can see, you've got a claw here with the thumb and the two shovels there that have separated to become the top fingers. Moving down to the legs, yet again, there's really not much in terms of paint application here. As you can see, long haul is just very green, sculpted in plastic with some nice riveted details, but really not much in terms of mechanical components. This one here, which I believe is meant to be Rampage, as you can see here, he's just mainly a goldish type of plastic with some black paint applications applied for the tread sections. I do think the feet look fairly nice and they do hold the figure reasonably well, considering how heavy the electronics in Devastator's head are. Now turning to articulation on the figure, here as you can see I've got an elastic band around the head, as if you don't have that elastic band, the head will just constantly collapse like that and will never be able to look up. With this elastic band, you are actually able to pose the head in a more upright position, which I definitely think looks a lot better in terms of display purposes. So for the head, there isn't much in terms of articulation. For the arms, as you can see, they can ratchet forwards and backwards on very stiff ratcheting joints even to this date 10 years have passed and the joints are still as good as new they can ratchet out to the sides they can also swivel and there is a 90 degree bend at the elbow 
As I stated, all three fingers are poseable, so you can maneuver them in a variety of different ways, and that is the same for this arm. Turning down to the leg sections, these are on ratchet joints, so you can ratchet those forwards and backwards. There is some slight knee articulation, and the foot can pivot ever so slightly. However, seeing how top heavy this figure is, there is really only one way you can display this figure, and that is displaying the legs in this default position. Any other position, and the figure is more than likely to topple over. Now, turning to this figure's main feature, the electronic feature, Essentially what you want to do is pull this section down, the head will open, the mouth will also open, and a variety of sounds and lights will go off. So to demonstrate that, you just simply take this, pull it back, and as you can see, Devastator will begin emitting, I think it's about eight different sound effects. And they are all of the sound effects that the Supreme Class Devastator has. Now, if I were to remove this elastic band from this, the head would collapse down every single time that I release this lever. However, as I stated, I do actually prefer having this around and tied to the back section of him, as it just keeps the head more erect and makes it look a heck of a lot better when displaying it. But as you can see, I really do like the LED feature and the sound effects on this figure. I specifically like some of the details that are in here, how this circular section here of all the green LED spins when you get to the sound effects where Devastator is supposedly vacuuming up the Autobot. Now there is quite a big space cavity in there. So if I was to take a figure such as the Clunker Bumblebee, you can insert the figure into Devastator's mouth and he will reasonably grip onto it. Obviously it can't insert fully into the mouth as the head is not that big. But if you had Legends class figures or Legion figures, they would definitely fit in fairly nicely. And from what I can tell, if you were to get anything stuck in the head, this whole section here is actually able to pull upwards like so. And underneath there, you can reach in and begin to move the figures around. So that was definitely a really good design choice on Hasbro's part as I know many kids would probably have crammed loads of Transformers in Devastator's mouth and then been horrified to note that he had in fact swallowed them. For some quick size comparisons with the 2009 Supreme Class Devastator, here I have him next to the brand new Power Charged Bumblebee, which is about a leader class scale, the Voyager Class Optimus Prime from the new Studio Series line, as well as the Studio Series leader class Jetfire. As you can see, Supreme Class Devastator completely towers over all of these figures, as he really should be, being a Supreme Class figure. I don't believe Hasbro nor Takara have released a movie-verse Transformer that is this big in a very long time, at least since the Dark of the Moon movie. Obviously, the brand new Transformer Studio Series Devastator will definitely be a force to reckon with, as I do think that it is made up of around 10, maybe more or maybe slightly less, Voyager and Deluxe class figures and as I stated depending on the configuration they go for the chest and head mode it could be made up of some leader class figures especially as Demolisher makes up the chest and Demolisher was a massive character in the movie so the studio series figure when that is fully complete may actually dethrone the supreme class devastator in terms of its scale but personally for display piece i do think it looks fairly nice it's obviously not in scale with your voyagers or leaders as i stated it is more in scale with the legions or legend class figures however if you're looking for an accurate devastator it doesn't look too out of place when compared to some of the newer voyager class and leader class figures. So there you have it. That is my review on the robot mode of the 2009 Supreme Class Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. Even after 10 years, this is still one of my most memorable pieces in my collection. I remember having so much fun with it, especially with the electronic lights and sounds feature, which despite it being removed in some of the newer figures and benefiting that, I do miss it as it was definitely a nice play feature to have on some of the Transformers figures. I do think that after 10 years, this figure has held up exceptionally well. As you can see from when I showcased the artistic Articulation. The joints in the arms have not withered whatsoever and the electronics still work as well as they did way back in 2009. I'm now going to showcase how you can strip Devastator down into his individual vehicular forms. So to start off with, we're going to be removing the Mix Master. Now essentially what you want to do here is just take this section and lift this up just like so and pull that out. 
as you can see my elastic band has been released and there is the entirety of Devastator's head now as you can see here it is more or less in its vehicle form already so in order to finalize that essentially what you want to do is come to this big section here and just simply detach it and as you heard, he will admit the transformation sound. And he does make this extremely annoying vehicle sound that does not stop going off. So in order to close this up, as you can see, there is a groove section here that these two sections will just plug into. And then there are some tabs there that will plug into the sides of here. So snap that into place, make sure that's snapped into place. Take these sections here and just launch those backwards. And there you have Mixmaster in his vehicle form. Now, as you can hear, I'm barely moving this and it is still making that extremely ridiculously annoying truck noise. It does just go off on an automatic loop, which is such a shame. Now, turning to details, as you can see, we have got some nice detailing on the grill as well as a nice Decepticon insignia. Very delicately turning this around without trying to set off the annoying lights and sounds gimmick. You can see the mixer here is extremely overly large when compared to what it should be in real life. However, it has been detailed fairly nicely. It does roll on six wheels, all of which roll exceptionally well so overall this isn't a bad looking truck how the head mode is definitely its better looking mode now turning to the rest of the figure we're going to take off this arm this is actually scrapper so in order to remove it you just simply take it and pull it off and as you can see here this joint will just detach from that joint in order to transform it is extremely simple you just take these wheels and clip them into place like so bring these sections out and then rotate this whole section all the way around now as you can see here there are some pegs and some tabs on either side of this digger. You're just going to want to essentially line those up just like so. Take the other side and plug that in. And there you have Scrapper in his vehicle mode. Now this is actually quite a nice looking vehicle. It definitely has some nice details. But however, once again, you can see that Hasbro are mainly focusing their attention on the robot form for Devastator as opposed to the individual modes. And that is definitely apparent considering as these don't transform into robots. As you can see, we do have a nice Decepticon insignia on the base of this engine part with some nice details. There is also some nice details on this shovel section here. Unfortunately, this section isn't able to lift upwards whatsoever. And seeing as these are on a ball joint, I do think that is a wasted opportunity. He does roll on four pinned on wheels. Remember the days when we used to just have pinned on wheels on all of the figures as opposed to a few and as you can see here this kind of control center too has been detailed and picked out in some nice paint so this is a reasonably nice looking vehicle form for scrap the next constructor con that i want to take a look at is of course hightower so in order to detach him it's the same way as scrapper you just simply remove him just like so he's a little bit more easier to transform you just fold these sections out here and then essentially collapse this down and rotate these sections upwards and then collapse them. And as you can see, there are some pegs on either side that will just tab into these holes. So just snap them into place, lift that up. And there you have Hightower in his vehicle mode. Now this is definitely the weaker out of the two that we've previously looked at. It's very basic and very simplistic and almost looks like a play school toy for children. It does definitely resemble that of a Constructicon vehicle that we saw in the Revenge of the Fallen movie, but it doesn't look that good. And it does just roll on four caster wheels on the bottom. It has some articulation here. These joints here are able to move up and down as well as this section too can move forward and backwards. But this is definitely the weaker of the three that we have had a look at so far. Moving down to the legs now, we're going to be taking a look at long haul. Much like the arms, you simply just take this and pop it off. It's a lot easier than the arms to detach, setting the rest of the body to the side. In order to transform this, you simply take this section, lift it upwards, take this foot and flip it around and then essentially collapse that in upon itself fold this section back and tab that into place. And there you have Long Haul in his dumpster truck looking vehicle mode. Quite a nice looking dumpster truck as well. It's been cast in a nice green plastic with this gray wash to give it a weathered effect. Can actually hold some stuff in the dumpster section as well. However, you do have the ugly gray combiner hinge. It does have some nice mechanical details within as well with the staircase picked out in plastic form. Decepticon insignia as well as some headlights. And it too does roll on four pinned on wheels. So this is quite a nice looking vehicle form. However, as I stated, the leg mode is definitely the better of the two modes. Next, we're going to turn our attention to Rampage. Now, Rampage in the movie was initially red. However, for the deluxe class figure and for the combiner leg, they did opt to go with this kind of sandy type of yellow plastic. I'm not entirely sure as to why. Much like the other figures, this is extremely easy to transform. Flip this section up and then just take this whole piece here and essentially collapse it in upon itself 
just like that. And there you have Rampage in his Constructicon vehicle mode. Now this one is actually detailed quite nicely. As you can see, you've got some nice mechanical components on either side. The treads have been detailed fairly nicely and he rolls on these two kind of rolling pin type of wheels. So he does roll fairly freely as well. However, he does have these claws sticking out of the back, which is of course not movie accurate. This section here is able to hinge up and down, which was absent on some of the previous Constructicon all modes. So overall, this is a fairly nice looking vehicle, but the leg mode once again is the superior mode. And finally, we turn to the final piece of Devastator, Scavenger, or as says we know him, Demolisher. This was actually the Demolisher vehicle mode that we saw in the movie. However, the figures tended to depict this as Scavenger. I'm not entirely sure as to why, but this is definitely the biggest of all of the Constructicon pieces and the most complex to transform. To begin with, you're going to want to just line everything up like so, flip this upwards here this red whole section here will detach from this so take that and just snap that off just like so take this section here and rotate it all the way underneath like that take this crane section here and just ratchet that out now these arms will come away from the body so just detach that and rotate that forwards and do the same process for this side rotate that in what you'll then want to do is take this section here and just lift this whole piece upwards just like that and collapse it down. Take this section here and snap that into place. And now this tab here will plug into this peg there. So take that and just snap that into place just like that. And there you have Scavenger in his very large vehicle mode. Now, as I stated, Scavenger is the largest of the vehicles and probably the most detailed of them as well. As you can see, he's got some nice riveting details on the side with details of some ladders. He's got some really nice sculpted detailing on the treads as well as on this crane section. This whole section here is able to move and ratchet forwards and backwards. However, the actual cradle itself has a massive hole for it. So you can't really have him holding any objects. Turning to the top of the figure two, he's got some nice mechanical sculpted and detailing there as well. And he does roll on four wheels just like that. However, this whole section here does tend to weigh him down. So the back two don't necessarily always touch the ground. But yet again, this is a fairly nice looking Constructicon vehicle mode. It's just definitely not my preferred mode. So there you have it. That is my look back on the Transformers 2009 Revenge of the Fallen Supreme Class Devastator. I hope that you enjoyed this review slash look back video and I hope to do more of these in the future. Depending on the success of this video and whether or not people would actually like to have some of these look back videos, I may definitely create a few more of these. However, they're not going to be frequent videos. I do only plan to do perhaps two or maybe once a month. I am mainly focusing my attention on Revenge of the Fallen figures at the moment due to it being Transformers 2's 10th anniversary this year. However, depending on what you want to see, I may take a look at some of the Dark of the Moon figures and the first movie figures. So if you did enjoy this review slash look back video, please let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.